So when shooting video of welding, I got sick of taking my neutral density filter on and off and changing the aperture all the time. So I started using this. I showed it in a previous video. It's just a normal auto darkening welding lens. To prototype it, I just stuck it on with tape. But now that I know that it does work, since I've already got 15 millimeter rails on my main camera here, and since I already own one of these little double clamp widgets from Small Rig, I guess I just need to 3D print some widget to hold that, like a frame. And I'll also put a plastic shield in front of it, just to prevent splatter and stuff from damaging this uh, lens. Right, I'm just going to drop down a few dimensions. Right, let's go to CAD and design something. So I modeled my rail clamp down here and then modeled the welding lens and a protective sheet to go in front of it. And then based on those things, I then made a little frame to go around it. If we look at the back of this, so I'll just drop in two M6 nuts to mount it to the rails. Then the protector can go in and then the lens unit. And I put a slot on the side for the little cable that comes out of it and the holes for the on off and brightness switch, which is down here. So save that as an STL and then slice it and you can see roughly what it's going to look like. What size does that lens protector need to be? Uh, 1989. Now I like to live my life by the maxim, use correctly, laziness is the key to efficiency. And I realized that I could probably optimize this whole 3D print a lot better, but if I don't have to, I won't. It doesn't really bother me cleaning out holes, which should be on size. Yeah, that'll work. Well, that fits nicely. When I first thought about how I was going to actually retain these parts, I was kind of thinking of, you know, some sort of fancy sort of clip together, self-locking sort of geometry. But realistically, there's no load on this thing. Once the lens is in place, this side's going to be butted up against the camera anyway. There's no real reason why it would come out. I did put a little slot so I could put a tie wrap through just to lock it in place on either side. One there as well, but I've now realized that I didn't take into account the thickness of that plastic, or at least not correctly. It doesn't look like I can get to the tie wraps. However, it does kind of click into place and ah, it does fall out. So do I drop this edge down a little bit or increase the height of the wall to make my tie wrap work or just use it as is? Oh wait, what am I thinking of? Tape, that'll always work. Ta-da! About 10 seconds later, that tape's already starting to peel off. Well, I'll stick it down again, because of course, if it didn't work at the start, of course it'll work better the second time. Oh, that's way recessed, hmm. So I stupidly made that feature there really thick because of the length of the thread, but didn't think through that that's quite heavily recessed. So I guess I will print, print a second one. Then I can fix the height of the retention tie wraps. I can f make this thinner. Cool, let's print another one. Okay, that's my second attempt at printing it. Now you can see how the whole thing shifted about halfway through. Not sure why that happened, but that makes that scrap. Okay, that's another fail. Hmm. The problem is, we're after that last fail, the Z height sensor wasn't working anymore. So I had a good look and I found there was a blob of plastic stuck to the sensor. So I took that off, but I must have bumped the sensor enough that it's dislodged the height adjustment. 
So I guess I better reset the height adjustment and then hopefully I can get a print to work. I get quite a bit of stringing when I print like this because after each layer it heads off to a park position to make the hyperlapse. That's when it strings. Okay, this one looks much better. Right, so there's my third attempt. So I'll just clean out those holes. And just to stop it falling out, here's my fire app solution. So I switched out for some longer rails so I can mount my macro lens. Let's see how it's going to work. Uh, yeah, that should work nicely too. Right, let's see what it looks like with the TIG welder. By the way, Arc Captain has taken me into their affiliate program. I'll leave a link below. If you buy a welder through them, you'll get a discount and I'll get a little bit of the profit, which I'd appreciate. So it helps keep this channel going. Link below. Right, now we just need to find something to weld. Right, let's see what this looks like. You might need to um, adjust the exposure down a little, but let's see. Whoops, I forgot to turn the lens on, so therefore it wouldn't have auto darkened. Let's try that again. Right, next up, let's just adjust the exposure down two stops and just see what that looks like. Seems to have a little trouble waking back up. Putting my hand over the light sensor seems to help it stabilize. Right, next up, let's have a look at it with the MIG welder. Okay, it looks like I might need a bit more gas there. What I also need to do is drop down the exposure. Two stops down seems to work well. I kind of tried two different speeds there. I was slow at the start and then I sped up. So it looks like maybe I should be going a little faster with my MIG. I'm kind of used to tigging now. The other thing I wanted to try out was doing a slow motion. Let's try that. Of course, there's no audio when you shoot in slow motion. This is, I think, 100 hertz slowed down to 25, so four times slower. I'll have to have a look next time I do some welding and see if I can make an even slower motion setting because it might be kind of cool watching that MIG wire poking in and out of the weld puddle. Okay next I'll try doing a joint between two thick wall square section tubes. Yeah, this auto darkening mechanism does have some issues returning to bright once the welding stops, but I can edit that out.
Okay, so that's the first one I did today, and the second, the third, and I think by the, the fourth one is starting to look somewhat okay. I do get it with MIG welding, it's much faster or more productive than TIG, but it's also a spattery, smoky mess. It'd be better if I had proper mix gas and not just CO2, I realise that, but I much prefer working with TIG, so I'll go back to that. But I'm very happy with this little widget, it's working well for me. Thanks a lot for watching.